My name is Greg Fansler, and I serve as Executive Director of Engagement and Alumni Relations here in our Division of Advancement. And I'd like to welcome you all to our first of a 10-part series, Conversations with the College. We've created this series to give alumni the opportunity to connect with our deans and our Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, we felt that this was a great opportunity to hear what is happening on campus now and what is going to take place into the future. We also felt like it was a great opportunity to celebrate the impact our alumni and friends have had on each academic unit through our Onward Upward campaign. I'd like to thank Angie Rowe, who's our Strategic Communications and Content Specialist with the Missouri State Advancement Team for her help and coordination of this series. Thank you, Angie. And I'd also like to thank all of the bears on the call here who joined us from five different states to hear from Dean Yankee and what is taking place at the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. I'd like to introduce our special guest, Dr. Dean Tammy Yankee. Um, Dr. Yankee has been at the, at this, at the university for, um, for over 35 years. She started and worked her way up from as an assistant professor to an associate professor, to the acting department head of the Department of Chemistry, to the acting associate provost of Missouri State University, to the dean, which is the current position she held, held today, has held today from since 2006. So 15 years, she's been the Dean of the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. Um, Dr. Yankee, if you could take us away and tell us all of the good things that are happening in the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. All right, I am so happy to be here today. I'm going to um, get my screen shared here. Um, so that we can, we can talk about what's happening in the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. So I am very, very happy to be here. Um, I'm excited that we've got some alumni on the call who want to hear more about the College of Natural and Applied Sciences and um, the Onward and Upward campaign and what you've already done for us and what we're hoping to do in the future. So thank you for being here and um, excited to share with you today. Um, so, you know, the College of Natural and Applied Sciences really is looking to develop global citizen scholars who are prepared to increase the understanding of the natural world and applied sciences within society. And we certainly seek excellence in teaching, research, um, scholarly productivity, professional and community service in all that we do. Um, and, and we first and foremost value our students and their success. So, Everything everyone does in the college, we're always thinking about the students. We're always thinking about their success. And how we do that is through active learning, through uh, the regular classroom teaching, through research. And so we'll talk a little bit about that today. I have an absolutely outstanding leadership team in the college. So currently, Dr. Jorge Rabaza is the Associate Dean of the college. He's from the math department. I have two Dean Fellows who have very specific duties for the next um, 18 months, Matt Siebert from Chemistry and Doug Guzay from uh, GGP. Um, Bob Mianovic currently serves as Department Head of Physics, Astronomy, Material Science. Bill Bray is the Department Head of Mathematics. Stephanie Hine is the Department Head of Hospitality Leadership, although she is leaving us over the summer and we, will, um, we have a new department head um, we're all ready to get started on July 1 for um, hospitality leadership. Toby Dogweiler is the department head for GGP, um, that is geography, geology, and planning. Doug Carroll is the director of our cooperative engineering program with Missouri S&T, and that includes mechanical, civil, and electrical engineering. Ajay Katangar is the department head for computer science. Adam Wanakaya is department head for chemistry and biochemistry, which just recently changed their name to add biochemistry in there. And uh, Alicia Mathis is the department head of biology. You know, we offer degrees in so many different areas. We do all the teacher education if you want to be a high school science or math teacher. And then in every area of science and mathematics that you can possibly imagine, as well as we prepare students to go to medical school, pharmacy school, and any of the health professional kinds of schools. So we're all ready to serve the students here at Missouri State. Um, 
that, that, you know, really the earth is our laboratory in science. Education and research can be done both indoors and outdoors. And so here are some of the outdoor pictures of students and faculty at work. Um, so today I wanna to share with you the strengths of our programs, our people, the experiences that we give to students. I'll be sharing some information about people, um, students, faculty, and staff, and about their various experiences, uh, about the teaching laboratories, the research, um, internships, what are our students really doing? So the first- Hear you. Science is, is a lot of work, but at the end of it all, I get to tell a pretty cool story about how nature and the natural world works. You can learn chemistry in a classroom, but it's hard to understand things aren't just what's on paper. Here, having that one-on-one -on -one time with an instrument is incredibly vital for developing skills. It makes research very easy because everything is available. Just getting to learn these different systems hands-on at a more in-depth level is very beneficial. It's important that students have a purpose and realize the big picture of the project they're working on because that's what drives you, that's what motivates you, that's what keeps you going because research is not easy. The math department pushes you to be curious. It's about finding things that are intriguing. Having an observatory is really useful. It's the tools you can get that prepare you for a job. It really gets your foot in the door if you have research experience at Missouri State. The professors want us to learn. They're willing to help you along. Sorry. In the way, as well as let you do what you want. A lot of the projects here are with technologies that you'll work with, and that's actually what they're using out in industry. The fact that I get to be a research assistant for this institute allows me to excel in an interview when they're trying to figure out if I can apply what I actually learned in school. Getting your foot in the door in computer science can be kind of hard at times. The computer science department specifically has made it a priority to do everything they can to get connections with companies. Um, there's a saying that if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And I strongly believe that. I really do think you need to have foresight and plan for the future to make the best type of communities possible. It's really beneficial to have professors that have already been in the industry because they can instill us with the knowledge that they already have. They just bring their experience into the class, and I think that that is what holds so much weight. The fact that there's an opportunity that my research could impact future studies and that future studies could lead to medicine and hopefully a cure it means the world to me. Yeah, the rewarding thing for me is that I do get to help the citizens of Missouri here in a drastic way. I can tell this story based on a crime scene that nobody else can really do for them and that's what they need. Being on top of it, Missouri State is based on ethics. So not only are they teaching us to be great leaders, they're teaching us to be ethical leaders, which is something that's really gonna be important as we move forward with the industry. There's just some genuinely good people in the program that I'm in, and that's all you can really ask for besides a great education. All right, so you heard from some of our students, some of our faculty, and we are, um, it, it, it's just an outstanding group. So I wanna give you some quick enrollment facts. Um, total number of majors, this includes both undergraduate and graduate students. Our graduate programs have remained constant even through the pandemic, which is great news. Um, as a matter of fact, one of them, which is fairly new computer science, has grown to uh, about 160 students over the last um, three semesters. Um, but the other programs, we've seen a decline in some of the undergraduate enrollment. So we are working aggressively to get that enrollment back up um, and looking forward to that. But, but it's overall, this is, this is kind of the picture of the whole college. And so it's just a quick picture here. Um, hopefully many of you are receiving our newsletter. It's called Discoveries. And the last issue came out in the spring. Um, and it includes typically a note from um, myself as well as looking at all of the awards that our faculty, our students, um, our staff are receiving as well as we um, often can include some alumni news in that as well. So um, that is um, a great way to stay connected. Another, um, if you're curious about what a favorite faculty member is doing on campus, you might look at Mind's Eye, 
Mind's Eye is a publication that comes out on a regular basis that really highlights individual faculty members. So um, Dr. Sakija is one of our new um, physics faculty members who's just really good at collaborative research. He's in the Department of Physics, Astronomy, and Material Science. He does computational studies. And so um, they do some really, really nice articles um, about those kinds of things. So um, those are great ways to, to find out what's happening. CNAS News Blog has the very latest of news and all of the departmental seminars, when we bring in speakers, those are all listed on our website as well. So I wanna take you, um, maybe if you've not been on campus recently, give you a little tour of campus from the college's perspective. So Pummel Hall is now home to uh, uh, hospitality leadership. They have floors three and four of that facility, lots of windows, lots of um, uh, lighted spaces, carries, um, uh, uh, cafe is there as well as a functioning kitchen that we use for, for classes, um, a really, really outstanding fit facility um, right in the middle of campus. And we're very proud of that facility. Then our cooperative engineering program is actually housed at the E factory, which is downtown. The E factory is on Jefferson street and used to be the old Turkey, Turkey plant. We've renovated it so that um, we use it for business startups, but it's also home of engineering. And so um, one of the things that we did recently is um, built out the rest of the building. It, some of it was a shell yet so that we could um, offer a third program in engineering, and that was mechanical engineering. So as we did all of those renovations, many people helped make that happen. So we actually have six named spaces in the E factory for the engineering students. Um, and the first person to kick it off was Guy Mace. And so I am forever grateful to him for stepping up and, and funding the Guy Mace Lab for Mechanical Engineering. And then the firms in town that helped us, Anderson Engineering, Olson Engineering, Toth and Associates, Associated Electric, and then the Carr family um, wanted to honor their father. And so they donated to um, have the George Carr Lab for Mechanical Engineering. So we would not be able to do what we do without that kind of support. So um, that's, that's really big for the whole college. Two other spaces where we exist, one of them is King Street Annex. Um, nearly 25% of the biology department is on second and third floor of King Street Annex. Um, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but we're hoping to move out of there um, because that building was not built for science labs. Kemper Hall is the home for to physics, astronomy, material science. It's also shared space with the College of Business and their construction management program as well. Um, we have um, Bolshoals Field Station um, is, is, we just recently added this new education facility that you see on the left. Uh, an awesome facility where we can have students. We've got some student housing down there. We've got a kitchen, we've got a classroom um, and we're doing um, a great deal of field trips and making sure that our students have access to that. It's on property that we now own. So we're looking at getting our research projects um, started over there in that, in that area. And there are just so many things that, that we can look at and do um, having that facility. On the right, you see um, the, the two domes for our telescope, our biggest telescopes out at the Baker Observatory. Um, the pad there with the smaller poles, we can mount um, smaller test telescopes on there when we have viewing nights. And oftentimes we can attract two to 300 people on a, on a typical viewing night. And so that's a, a very popular, but it's also used for research. So the additional um, college facilities are Temple Hall, which houses bio biology, chemistry, biochemistry, GGP, as well as Cheek Hall, which houses computer science and math. We have classrooms and labs in the football stadium, as well as um, we have space at the Levy Wolf building downtown for our center for resource, resource planning and management. So, so the college is not all in one space. We're, we're kind of all over campus. 
that's not a bad thing, um, but, but we'll talk a little bit more later about some exciting news about Temple Hall and Cheek Hall and some possibilities that we have about that for our future. So I mentioned that um, our laboratory is the world. It's the entire earth, but sometimes it's also in a building where we have instrumentation and computers um, and, and technology to help us advance the knowledge of our faculty and of our students um, so that we can share that knowledge with the world. So um, having adequate facilities to do this work is oh so very important. And, and really that's one of the strengths of the College of Natural and Applied Sciences is for students to have that opportunity to work side by side with a faculty member to work on a research project where neither one of them know what the answer is going to be. They're designing the experiment, they're running the experiment, and they're doing the work. Students also, um, if they don't have that opportunity or if they'd rather be working in industry, we help facilitate internships for students. And certainly all of our hospitality leadership students do internships as part of their degree program. So just to let you know how important that research component is to the college is typically 25% of all peer reviewed research published at Missouri State is coming from the college. And many of these faculty publications have student co-authors. This year, we will host our 13th annual um, undergraduate research event. Um, typically 35 to 85 students are presenting their research each year. This year, we're going to do a hybrid event. So we, it's always been a poster session until the pandemic, and then we went virtual. What we found was that some alumni, some parents that can't make it to campus really liked that virtual component. So it will be both virtual as well as an on-campus event. Um, and we'll have more information about that for all of you. And then our graduate students present at the Einhellig Interdisciplinary Forum, which is sponsored by the Graduate College. And so that's also an important component. We want our students to be able to communicate what they're learning in the research labs as they do this. We have, the faculty have been extremely successful in obtaining funding, whether it be state or federal or private funding for their research. Um, it's just not possible to do it, all of this with what we have currently. So from 2012 to the present, um, the faculty have written grants to bring in almost $20 million in research funding for the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. And I didn't even try to add up the state funding and the private funding that we also receive for, for, for research, but that's, that's a significant number and it makes a difference because much of that goes um, to for the students and for supplies so that they can have that outstanding learning experience on our campus. In addition to having that experience and being able to present their research on campus, we also take students to conferences. Um, during the pandemic, most of them went virtual and we taught them how to do a virtual um, presentation. Um, we're back to most of the conferences are now face-to-face. Um, -face. So these are some pictures pre-pandemic of us taking our students to various places for these conferences. And, and that's just a really important networking event for these students. It helps them find jobs or um, places in graduate school if that's what they're looking to do next. And not only do we have outstanding students and we have so many outstanding students, but we also have um, a rank at the university called distinguished professor. So once a professor really does um, is here, they've done outstanding work, there's a rank above professor. And these are all the faculty that have earned that rank within the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. And we are so proud of each and every one of the people on that list. We also have um, named professorships in the college. And so if it weren't for, um, um, once again, Guy Mace starting an engineering professorship, we wouldn't have that available. And currently D Dr. Matt Pearson 
um, uh, has that, that professorship within civil engineering. Matt and Pat Patricia Harthcock started a faculty fellowship for the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. And currently, um, Dr. Nick Garasimchuk is in that position. He's a chemist. We also recently, we, we have three others that are pledged that we should be able to get started here very soon. That's the Jerry Atwood Professorship in Chemistry, the James F. O'Brien Faculty Fellowship in Chemistry, and the Amelia Counts Chair of the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. So thank you, thank you, thank you to those who have, have provided that. Um, as you see, there are a number of other faculty that might be deserving of those within other departments. Um, and so that's another way to help the university and move us onward and upward. But many of you are interested in the students and in their scholarships. So these are the scholarships that we gave out last year. Um, the students just finished applying for scholarships this year. So our committees are just getting together right now to make the awards for 2022. So last year, it, within the, just within the College of Natural and Applied Sciences, we distributed almost $175,000 in scholarships. Try not to leave anything on the table. We try to make sure we give out as many awards as we possibly can. Um, and so it is, it, it is such an honor to, to be able to distribute those funds to the students so that they can further their careers. Um, and so we thank everyone who has donated to a scholarship. And I mentioned internships before. Workforce development is important for us. We want our students to be able to, as soon as they graduate, if what they want to do is get that job in the industry, we want them to be able to, to do that. So um, hospitality leadership has two career fairs every year. Um, the College of Natural and Applied Sciences does um, uh, uh, an event for students, specifically for STEM students every fall. The university does a big career fair every year. Um, this is only a small portion of the companies that have hired our graduates. So if you don't see your company on this list, it's probably on one of my other slides and I just didn't want to have them all up here. Um, we use a, a, a software program now called Handshake. So you can recruit students um, from, from Missouri State University from anywhere in the world. So if you want to know more about Handshake, um, let me know and I'll get you connected with our career services um, people and they can get you connected um, to, to that. And if you wanna to come to the STEM Career Fair and be present and talk to our students, we would love to have you there as well. So um, in 2018, um, we did something a little bit different. Um, and that is we started a college fee. And that college fee is per credit hour for um, 100 level classes and then a different level for the 200 to 500 level classes. And then we eliminated all of the lab fees. So there's not $5 here and $30 here and $25 here. It's straight across the board, makes it so much easier for everyone to understand. So um, the first thing we did was we distribute now $350,000 to the departments to cover all of those annual lab fee expenses. So we review that and we made sure they had enough money. The rest of it is using to support a student success office where we currently have two staff members, soon to be three. And it's also funding um, construction and renovation projects, as well as a master plan for the College of Natural and Applied Sciences that we didn't, wouldn't have had the funding for previously. So I wanna tell you a little bit about that master plan because good things are happening. Um, that master plan told us that we didn't have enough space in the college. Um, we left out hospitality leadership. Remember, Pummel Hall was just renovated. We left out engineering because they have great new spaces down at the E factory. But we looked at all of the other spaces. Um, and Kemper Hall um, has enough space for physics. And so we will, we will remain there. Um, and we focused on Temple Hall and then Cheek Hall. Temple Hall was built in 1971, and it's not been remodeled substantially since it was constructed. So you see a picture of the pit right there. Um, 
On the other hand, since 1971, our enrollment in the sciences has grown from 1,000 students to 2,400 students. Um, and we've over, over doubled our graduate enrollment over these years. So the master plan told us that we didn't have enough space. Mostly it was research and teaching lab spaces and spaces for our graduate students, and then general spaces for students to um, do collaborative work. And so um, the master plan identified that probably the best place to put um, an addition to Temple Hall, um, and it would, would be approximately 66,000 gross square feet. It would be four stories tall. So it would go um, right in front of the lecture halls. For those of you who have been on campus recently, it would go all the way to the football stadium, be even with the rest of the north side of Temple Hall. So it's that yellow portion that you see on the, the screen. The green portion is, is current Temple Hall. The white pieces um, below the yellow is the lecture halls. The other side is the greenhouse and the vivarium. Um, and then we would do renovations within Temple Hall to connect everything and to make sure that we've got some really good things happening. Um, and so we actually hired an architect um, last uh, uh, October. Um, we hired uh, BNIM out of Kansas City and we um, have a 58 week schedule um, from that approval to the groundbreaking, which will happen um, this year in December. While we had kickoff meetings last year, we have finished um, currently the plan and now are beginning schematic design right after spring break. Um, we're working with a construction management firm that will also be helping with this whole process. Um, and like I said, groundbreaking will happen. So we are very, very, very excited about this. It's going to provide for the future of the college, increase visibility for science, enable research and teaching, give us the space that we need. And as I think about it, it's going to be transformational. It's going to change everything that we do. If you think about our external funding now, just think about what would happen if we've got that much extra space. So, I mean, I just, um, I think we're going to change the world in the next, um, in the next few years as this project is completed. Um, we held workshops with faculty, with students. Um, they, they would ask questions like, what do you wanna keep? What do you wanna to toss? What do you wanna create? And what do you want to showcase? And, and, and so things started coming together as we've been designing the building um, and those designs will come out. We'll have pictures in the next eight to 10 weeks um, about that project. Um, right now, here's what we think it might look like. So this would be, the new building would be um, to the left side and the football stadium would be on the far left. The old building would be on the right there and you see the fountain, you see the seating that's out there already. Um, and so that's what we're, we're looking to do. It looks like, um, and we've, we've certainly seen around the world that um, inflation has hit. So we're, we're looking at about $60 million for phase one, and that's to add the new piece. And then all the interior renovation would be about another 40 million for a total of a hundred million dollar project. So um, we're looking at federal funding for this. We're looking at state funding for this. We're looking at private donors to help us with this. And so another big, um, push in terms of what you can help us with in this onward and upward campaign is to name the facilities within this wonderful new facility. Um, but I don't want to leave out Cheek Hall. So Cheek Hall is phase three. It was built in 1955 as the university's library. It was renovated in the 80s to house math and computer science. And it's the only building in, the, in that quad that has not had any renovations done to it. Um, so what we're looking at here is to the north of Cheek Hall, adding a significant addition, um, adding some offices. Some of the offices in Cheek Hall are very, very small. Most of them don't have windows, so it would be opening up the building and allowing for that, but giving us some more collaborative spaces for both math and computer science. So we're looking at that as well. 
you know, our priorities as we move towards the future are, you know, clearly we've got a need for this new space. We think we've got some funding sources. Um, and so we just need, we're gonna need private help to help us finish that project. Um, for undergraduate research day, we give out student awards. And if you would like to provide for some of those awards, if you've been to that event or if you've watched it virtually, um, you can donate money to the CNAS general fund. We are always in need of our stu uh, of student scholarships. They, um, you know, the students are uh, struggle right now and we wanna keep their debt as low as possible. And so if we can provide them with funding um, that is a very high priority for us. Faculty fellowships, professorships, and chairs. We also have an equipment fund within the college um, because instrumentation for us is important to the research and teaching so that our students are prepared. So we have an equipment fund and it is our goal to have that endowed so that we have that available to use as well. Uh, college of Natural and Applied Sciences is one of the colleges that's not named yet. So there is a naming opportunity for someone out there. And certainly any um, help that we can have for the addition and renovation to Temple Hall or to Cheek Hall, there will be naming opportunities for labs, classrooms, and student spaces. And we would love to have you be part of that party. Um, you can follow um, the college on Twitter or myself on Twitter. We're also on Facebook, Instagram. I have our website up there as well as my email information. And I would just remind you as I remind my faculty and staff every single week to be kind, be positive, be strong and to be safe. And I thank you very much for your attendance today and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Dean Yonke, uh, for this wonderful presentation and, and great ending there to be kind, positive, strong and safe um, here, here. Uh, what what I found really exciting, particularly about Cheek and Temple Hall, is um, are you would you be able to share what programs may expand with this new addition, and maybe the academic programs? What, who's going to see the biggest um, lift with with the with these updates? So the biggest lift Department. is yeah, the biggest lift is going to come to the sciences. So mm -hmm. so what it's going to do is give us some additional space in Temple Hall for biology chemistry, biochemistry, and ge geography, geology, and planning. It will also allow us to have those three departments fully in Temple Hall. So we'll move out of King Street Annex. Um, they have taken up some spaces in Kemper Hall. We can move out of there so that physics will have the space that they need and everyone else. Um, so biology, chemistry, geography, geology, and planning, and physics will all gain in this particular, um, with the first phase, first two phases. And then once we get over to Cheek Hall, then math and computer science will be the two winners of that. Okay, thank you. Um, for alumni out here, by all means, please type in questions. You can use the Q&A function or the chat. Questions for Dean Yankee. I'll, I'll ask one more, um, why folks may be thinking of something to share with you. Um, is uh, how can alumni, how would you encourage alumni beyond following you here on Twitter and the college, um, how would you encourage them to get involved, to support, um, and, and, to, and to be connected to, to CNAS? Certainly come back and visit campus. Um, mm -hmm. We love to have you come back and visit campus. Most of our departments have um, a seminar program, and not only are they looking for scientists who um, might be able to recruit students into a graduate program, but they love bringing alumni back who can talk to the students and say, here's what I did after I graduated. And here's how Missouri State prepared me for that. Um, the students absolutely love those conversations. So being in touch with us, serving on an advisory board. Um, so almost all of the departments have an advisory board um, that helps us to get better. It helps us to be better always. Um, and so visiting campus and being part of that is, is absolutely important. And, and we'd, so we'd love to have you come back. Um, and as you come back, be happy to give you a tour of where we are in wherever we are with this construction project. I'll be happy to uh, share with you um, updates um, as we go along. And um, there are just so many, so many good ways to be 
involved with your home department. If, you, if, you, if you're not sure how to get in touch with that person, you can email me and I would be happy to put you in touch with the right people. And I'm looking at the Q&A to see if there's any other questions. I don't see anything. Brent, anything else that you have a question for me? No, I'd, I'd probably echo the uh, what you said about getting uh, getting involved uh, through advisory boards. But really, there there's going to be some cool things happening uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, hopefully, that um, it, it's important for not only alums but for uh, friends of the institution and people that want to hire uh, our students. And, and so a question, I guess, uh, for you is um, that's such a wide range of, um, of disciplines. Uh, what, what's the demand or what, what do you see as sort of the demanding uh, profession that uh, people are trying to get students from? Um, the demands are really high for um, almost everything right now. So the students are all getting jobs and, and the, the companies are calling us. I would say um, computer science is a big one. Um, engineering, the students all have jobs long before they graduate, which is, which is amazing. We have such a great support system there. Um, <clears throat> but I would say if if you are someone that's looking to hire students, um, you can either call the department head or even better, um, we, we work in collaboration with the career services people. So we can help you there um, to be able to do that as well. All right. Here we have some more questions coming in and sorry for the uh, technology error here. Uh, Carolyn Chapman asks, uh, Dean Yankee, I have a daughter coming to Missouri State in the fall. And when we attended the showcase event, sustainability was mentioned as a new major. Would this be under your umbrella? Yes, it will. It will be um, housed within that department of uh, geography, geology, and planning. Um, and it's through it's getting through the final approval process right now. So it will be all ready for um, for someone to start in the fall. Yeah, everything will be ready. Excellent. Does um, and Kat Schultz asks, does the CNAS have a biomedical informatics program, machine learning, artificial intelligence? And she appreciates your call, your talk yeah. today. Yeah, so we do not have a major in that. We do have a certificate program um, with computer science and biology working together on that. So that's about 12 credit hours to, to kind of get some skills up but we don't have a specific undergraduate program for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thanks for your question, Kat. Um, for, from Ben Wheeler, he asks, uh, can you elaborate on the Bull Shoals field station? Where is it? And can you provide some of the history and context for how we got that? Yeah, so, um, so the new um, Bull Shoals of field station is in Cedar Creek, Missouri. So it's on the south side of Bull Shoals Field Station. Um, <clears throat> Terry Chase and Chase Studios donated um, a, a, a good portion of land and it is on that land where this sits. So that's where we have land then to work on research projects. Um, and Ben, if you wanna contact me, I can put you in contact with the person so that you can schedule your students to go out there or schedule a visit to the field station. We'd, be, we'd love to show you around and, and have you help us um, with that. We also have land, we have buildings on the north side of Bull Shoals where we have an education building, um, <clears throat> we have housing there, and it's, it's on property um, that's owned by Department of Conservation as well as the Corps of Engineers. And we have a long, long-term lease on that. Um, and so we can use it, we don't own it. Um, but many of our research projects started over there. We've been over there for about 15 years and 20 years. And so 
we may transition and move just to one side of the lake because it's hard to keep track of things on both sides of the lake. Right. Any more questions out there? If not, Brenton, and thank you for plugging the gap there with my uh, computer error here. But uh, um, if you could please share a few words about Onward Upward. Yeah, so uh, many of you remembered October uh, 26, 2019. That is when we made this public, the Onward Upward campaign. That was a homecoming weekend. Uh, we announced um, that John Goodman, uh, our alum, is uh, the chairman of that committee. Um, and uh, John uh, made a nice gift uh, to, to his college. But, but really, the areas we're raising money for are student scholarships, which that is uh, ever needed, faculty support, uh, program support, and then capital support. So that covers a large area of the university. So here, here's the date I do want you to put that uh, on your calendars, and that is October 29th of this year. So that's homecoming weekend. Uh, there's the normal things that are happening, but on October 29th at 7.30 at, at JQH Arena, we are having the celebration. Uh, of what occurred during this campaign. So John Goodman uh, will be emceeing. He'll be there on campus. Uh, we'll have some surprise guests uh, that are nationally uh, known in terms of a recording artist. Uh, it'll be a fun time. It's very casual, uh, but that will sort of uh, highlight homecoming weekend. And so celebrating uh, what's occurred uh, since we announced the campaign. So please, please, please put it down on your calendars, October 29th. The doors will open at seven o'clock at JQH and then uh, the uh, hour long event will start at 7.30. So that, that will be fun and celebrating what's happening in uh, CNAS and all the other colleges. So hope you can join us uh, in October, Greg. Thank you, sir. Um, and Dean Yonke, thank you for being the first to raise your hand to be part of this 10-part series, Conversation with the Colleges. We greatly appreciate your time um, over this lunch hour. For those of you on the call and interested, tomorrow will be the second installment of our program of Conversations with the College and that Dean Sean Wall from the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters will be on the noon hour. If you'd like to hear um, some of the things that are happening there, including what Brent just mentioned, uh, Mr. John Goodman and 10th Theater, I know that will be a part of the discussion tomorrow. Please join in. Um, there will also be throughout the next six weeks um, an opportunity to, to connect with the dean um, or the vice president in student affairs. So do please um, take a look at that list that we'll share with you as a follow up to this particular event. And if you're what and if you'd like to, you're welcome to join and, and, and connect with those deans and vice president um, at your leisure. So um, back to you, Dean Yankee. Thank you again. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with the group while while we while we're with folks and we can close a few minutes early? Um, no, I do I would just invite everyone back to campus um, and stop by, say hi, um, and 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 we'd love to show you around the building and make sure you can find all your old friends back here again. So come back for homecoming. Indeed. Thank you, Dean Yankee. And, and I'll echo that sentiment. By all means, do get in touch with us if we can help you with anything in your local area or even here in Springfield uh, to connect you back to campus. That's our job. We would love to be able to be a conduit for that. So thank you for your time and for joining this afternoon. Go Bears.